mic gonna work, or is it just a? Uh... All right, welcome Triton Nation to the Triton Nation Broadcast Network. We're here uh, with another Triton baseball game to Triton's take on Lake State, Lake Region State Community College out of Devils Lake, North Dakota. Uh, we're going to get kind of a quick start here, um, but just to uh, give you a, a rundown quickly of our Defense today on the mound starting for your Tritons is number 14 sophomore Ian Culver out of Roseville, Minnesota. He'll be throwing to his catcher. Number four, also out of Roseville, Minnesota, Zach Goodwin at first base. Number 25, Michael Seamer uh, at second base is number one, Cooper Nicholson. Uh, at third base is... Uh, number t number 19, Troy Berg, and we'll get the rest of it in a little bit on the first pitch to number four, Hugh Montgomery for Lake State. Culver throws a, sends one in, and uh, Montgomery pops it straight up in the air, and it is brought in behind the pitcher's mound by Berg. So one pitch, one out, quick start here for the Tritons. And that'll bring up number two, or the catcher, Nicholas Smith. Left-handed batter. He takes ball one outside. Rounding out the uh, defense for the Tritons uh, at shortstop is number nine, Busson. And there's a swing and a miss. Left field is number 23 Mauser, center field number two Bauman, and in right field number eight Pete Johnson. One and one count, that has popped up back out of play. One and two count here to the catcher Nicholas Smith. Ninety mile an hour fastball up out of the zone. Ball two. Another fastball up. Full count now here to the catcher. One down here in the top of the first inning. Triton's undefeated on the season. Uh, I've had a busy week, two games on Thursday, two games Friday. There's a hard ground ball, foul down the first baseline. Looking to, uh, they got two more games today and two more tomorrow, or just one tomorrow? One tomorrow. So three more games here for this weekend, but uh, definitely getting uh, a look at the depth of, our, of the Tritons pitching this week. It's an interesting bat. Looks like a pencil. It's the pencil bat. Yeah. Marini. A Marini that looks like a pencil. That's, that's interesting. It's cute. Up and out for ball four. That will bring up the right fielder. Tyler Kleingen. K-L-E-I-N-J-A-N. I'm going with Kleingen. Somebody else might have a different pronunciation for me, but uh, playing right field today. Sophomore out of uh, Velva, North Dakota. He takes ball one. There's a strike. 78 mile an hour s slider. <laughs> I'm looking over at Mr. Kirkhoff here to my right through the window. He's coaching me on the pitches. There's a there's a strike. Catches the outside edge of the zone there. One 
One two count here to the number three batter. One down. Runner goes. Zach from his knees tosses over and the runner safe. Almost slides off the base, but gets there just in time. Zach made a good throw from his knees. But it's a 2-2 count here with one out now. Curveball drops in just outside. Full count. And he misses outside. So two walks here after the first out. Gets runners on first and second with one down for the Royals. Hits him. Hits him in his feet. So base is loaded now. Overcast, chilly day here. And obvious, of course, it's always windy in Fort Dodge. So we got a coach visit coming up here. 44 degrees with a 15 mile an hour wind gusting to 26. Northwest wind, so blowing um, a little towards the out right field, center field more across the field. So some uh, quick words of encouragement here from the coach. Side ball one. This is the third baseman, Jacob Warnke. Warnke. That's low for ball two. Catches the outside zone there. I think it's a uh, little bit of a generous outside strike zone there. Well, we will definitely take it. There's a swing and a miss. Ooh, that must have been a little high. Full count. Yeah. Got him. On the outside edge of the zone there. Batter thought it was outside, was going to take first base, but and uh, gets him looking for his first strikeout in the second out. We'll now bring up the sixth batter, the shortstop, Brodina. He swings at an inside pitch, fouls it off back for strike one. 
So bases loaded here in the top of the first inning. Two down. Let's see if Ian can get out of this jam here. There's a nice pitch. Fastball down the middle for strike two. 89 mile an hour fastball. That's popped up back out of play. Count remains 0-2. Number 11, Hunter Brodina out of Perposky, Minnesota. Went to Bemidji High School. Oh, that one slips out of Ian's hand there. Luckily didn't get past Zach. One and two count. ball. I think Zach almost got that in his glove, but Hard to tell from the back vantage point. Yeah. Difficult to tell from this vantage point. Says Mr. Goodwin sitting next to me. We'll see if we can get a headset on him for that color commentary. There we go. Swinging a miss for strike three. Ian with a couple of walks and a hit by pitch, puts himself in a little bit of a jam, but he works his way out of it, gets two strikeouts, close out the inning, harmless, no hits, no runs, and the score is 0-0 going into the bottom of the first inning. We'll be back on the Triton Nation Network. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! Welcome back to Triton Baseball. We are in the bottom of the first inning here, and we're looking at the starting pitcher for the Royals, uh, number 30, Simon Beach, um, a right-handed pitcher out of Devil's Lake, North Dakota, so his hometown, um, hometown kit for Lake State. Um, he will lead off here, or he will face off against our leadoff batter, um, number one, Cooper Nicholson. And uh, he will be, following Cooper will be Troy Berg, our third baseman, followed by our first baseman, Michael Seamer, batting fourth for the Tritons, our center fielder, Bauman, and batting fifth is our right fielder Pete Johnson, batting sixth, designated hitter Will Smoot, batting seventh, the left fielder Jake Mauser, batting eighth and catching, number four Todd Goodwin, and batting ninth, and <sighs> Zach Goodwin. Um, but we have Todd Goodwin. I think we're going to get him a microphone here in a minute. But uh, And then rounding out the no order, number nine, uh, our shortstop, Busson. So Cooper on the first pitch. 
Sends a deep fly ball to center field. Center fielder going back. He gets over his head to the wall. And Cooper going for third. He's, he's held up at second for a little bit. Took a look and said, I can make it. And he gets to third base with an opening, with a leadoff triple on the first pitch. So here we go. Tritons with a runner on third base now. And that will bring up um, the red hot. Troy Berg. I just want to make sure I get the first names right here, guys. I'm hesitating. I know it's Troy Berg. I just want to make 100% sure it is before I say it. So <laughs> I got three different screens going here. Uh, Troy looks at ball one low. Ball two. That's low and outside, I believe, for ball three. There's a foul ball back out of play. So 3-1 count here to Berg with a runner on third base. Another foul ball, third base side. Troy hitting 421 on the season. I'm not sure how up to date these stats are. Like I said, we've played four games already since Thursday, so not exactly sure what game this gets us through. But online here, we got a 421 average. There's a little blooper out in the left field, and it's going to drop, and that's going to score Cooper, who held up for a little bit just to make sure the ball was going to fall and runs in easily for the Tritons' first run of the day. That's going to bring up our first baseman, Michael Seamer. <laughs> Seamer, a sophomore, batting 373 on the season. And Berg goes inside pitch for ball one, and the throw is outside on the shortstop side of the base. And Berg is in there easily with a stolen base. So no outs now. Runner on second base, and Seamer at the plate with a 1 0 count. Seamer hitting 373 on the season with. Uh, one home run, but uh, I think I think he's got more than one home run now. There's a foul ball into the netting in the backstop, but uh, 15 RBIs, um, six doubles, and a triple. Michael is a commit to Eastern, no, to Southern Illinois University Edwardsville in Edwardsville, Illinois. I think we were Googling where that was, Southern, Southern Illinois somewhere, <laughs> as the name would apply. <laughs> <laughs> Two on count here to Seaver. That's uh, low and outside for ball three. If I, hey, if I don't make you guys smile or laugh either at me or with me during this broadcast at least once, I haven't done my job. But 3-1 now. That's popped up. Third baseman not moving very far, calling off the shortstop, and he pulls that in for the out. So on a 3-1 count, Seamer pops that up to um, third base. And that brings up Harrison Bowman. 
Runner goes, and there's a single right past the third, between the third baseman and shortstop. The third baseman probably would have had that if he hadn't moved over to cover third because Berg had gone. So a good hit and run play there puts gets the fielder out of position, and uh, Bowman puts it right where the third baseman would have been into left field for an RBI single. So uh, Triton's being aggressive on the bases and at the plate and uh, have a two-run lead here with one out in the bottom of the first. Pete Johnson steps to the plate and uh, swings and misses at the first offering. I didn't even get to tell you Bowman's stats for Pete's sake. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll have another chance. Pete Johnson out of Minnetonka, Minnesota. Pete's hitting 370 on the season with uh, six home runs. 15 RBIs and two doubles in 14 games. Takes a strike on the outside edge there. Or the inside edge of the uh, batter's box, maybe. I don't know. The runner goes. Swing and a miss. Catcher steps aside, sends the throw, but... Uh, Bowman in easily with the stolen base. Also, uh, and uh, Johnson strikes out on that, by the way. For the second out. That brings up Will Smoot, our designated hitter today, number 17. Who is, as Todd says, is absolutely crushing the ball right now. And there's another high fly ball to center field. Center fielder stepped in and then steps back. And that's gone over the fence. Over the batter's eye. For a home run. Two run home run for Will Smoot. Another homer. And I got a I got a quick pull up Will's stats here if the internet will cooperate with me. So we can add that to his stats. Again, not knowing uh how up to date this is it only shows three home runs i think he's already got five i think he had two more home runs since these stats were updated i think that was his sixth home run of the day but he's been just crushing it lately with batting 357 with those home runs oh, and that brings out mauser no home run and a home run to right field for mauser on the first pitch and uh the tritons are feeling it here in the first inning Now 5-0, Tritons. These guys are hitting, their, their at-bats are so quick and so efficient, I can't even pull up their stats. They're not missing on the fouls. They are not. They're, they're swinging. They're being aggressive. And they're delivering. And Zach Goodwin, Zach Goodwin, steps to the plate, takes ball one. Out. Oh, no, strike one on the outside. This is a generous strike zone, definitely. Um, Zach from Roseville, Minnesota. We'll get his stats here in a second. Oh, he takes, he sends a line drive to right center field. And that's going to get to the quote unquote brick wall there in right field underneath the scoreboard. And Zach's in with a stand up double. A nice line drive hit there to right center field. <clears throat> Zach's batting 420. No, that's on base percentage of 425 with one home run. And we have a visit on the mound. We're going to have a little chat here, see what's going on. Are we going to get a new pitcher or nope? He's okay. Sure, you got this. All right. All right. And now Jake Busson is going to step to the plate playing shortstop today, number nine. Jake Busson. Jake from uh, a freshman from Hudson, 
Wisconsin takes strike one. Jake's uh, batting 292 on the season with uh, two home runs, three doubles, and nine RBIs. Hopefully these line up with the stats you're seeing on the screen. 0-2 count now here to Bussin with two down. Zach Goodwin on second base for the Tritons. And there's a line drive to left field, and that is off the wall, high up the wall. Bounces off. The left fielder plays it pretty well, but uh, Bussin still gets the double out of it, slides in there for the double. RBI double for Bussin, and it is now 6-0. Tritons. Back to the top of the order now with two down. We're going to see Cooper Nicholson step to the plate here. He hit a triple on his first pitch he saw. Uh, exit velocity 105 on that uh, double, by the way. That's pretty impressive. And Nicholson takes ball one. There's a strike. One one count here to Nicholson. Bussin on second base. In low and inside for ball two. There's a ground ball to the shortstop backhands. It steps up, fires over, but uh, that would have been a tough play for a lot of shortstops, uh, especially with Nicholson's speed, and Nicholson beats out the throw. Good play by the shortstop, just he didn't have a lot of time. And Nicholson with an infield hit. And that brings up Troy Berg, who uh, had that uh, kind of bloop single into a left field, his first at bat, scoring Nicholson. And that one bounces off the uh, catcher's foot, I believe, gets away from him, and that will score Bussin. And Nicholson moves up to second base. So runner on second base now, two down, Troy Berg at the plate. The ball a low and outside. Seven zero Tritons here in the bottom of the first inning. We got two down. Lake State hoping to uh, close this inning out here. Curveball drops in there nicely. Two one count. And there's a line drive to left field. That's going to get to the wall. It's going to be an RBI. Going for two. Close play. And just slides in under the tag to the, I think the tag was to the face there. <laughs> um, but uh, Berg slides in there safely. A 103 exit velocity on that one. Well hit ball. Nice relay by the defense. Yeah, good relay. Almost gets him trying to get that double. And we're going to get a new pitcher here for Lake State. And uh, do we want to do want to take a break during the pitching change? We will. Uh, we'll, I'll take a quick break here while the uh, the new pitcher warms up here, and we'll give you some information on the new pitcher when we come back. 
Here's CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only bio manufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! Seamer um, popped out to the third baseman, his first at bat. There's a wild pitch in the dirt on ball four. Moves a runner up to third base. Runners on the corners now with two down. Triton's leading 8-0. And now Harrison Bowman, our center fielder today, will step to the plate. Harrison uh, one for one on the day with a ground ball to left field. He takes strike one on the outside edge there. Another pitch on the outside. That one ball. One. That was a strike. Yeah, if you can find that outside edge of the zone, it's a little bit extended. I'm trying to get a better view of it on the YouTube video, but it's delayed that I see trying to see how far outside that is but if you can find that spot and keep hitting it uh ump's going to be kind to you that one's low in the turf for ball two there's an inside pitch and bowman Gets it over a leaping second baseman, and nobody covers second base, so Bowman gets two out of that. Really a single that he extended to, I don't know who you would assign the error to, but the team on that one, but clearly an error fielding issue gave uh, Bowman second base. But he's going to get credit for a double because you, you can't give an error to somebody who wasn't there. So runners on second and third now. Uh, 
Ball one low to Pete Johnson. And Pete struck out his last at bat. Very dangerous hitter. He's a Pete Johnson, very dangerous hitter. Oof, swing and a miss. It's kind of like he either doesn't get on base or he gets a home run. Off speed. Curveball. Knuckleball. Two balls, one strike, two outs. See, this is why you need a headset. <laughs> Outside, ball three. Three one count here to Johnson. Oh, a long drive over a leaping shortstop. And that's going to score both runs. So a two RBI single for Johnson. I'm I'm thinking uh, Culver's probably thinking, let's get this half inning over so I can get back out there. <laughs> He's going to have to warm up all over again. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you might just have to go to the bullpen and throw a couple here. Will Smoot steps to the plate. Will had a quick home run his last at bat. I mean, straight away center field. Deep. I'm wondering how far this one is going to go over the left field wall. And uh, with the Tritons leading 11 0 now here in the bottom of the first inning, Smoot takes strike one. Ooh, a swing and a miss on a nasty pitch. Low and outside, ball one. Dude, that is so gross. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Triton pitchers in the booth next to me are... are uh, adding some commentary about how gross these pitches are. And they are. They uh there's some uh interesting pitches here. Nasty pitch fouled off back into the netting. 2-2 two -two count here, two down. Runner on first base for Will Smoot. Ooh, Will ducks out of the way of that one. Full count now. Lake State just begging for an out here. Ooh, fouls it off. Stays alive. And a full count. Next up is Jack Mauser. I may have said Jake Mauser earlier, by the way, uh, fully admitted, it, you know, calling myself out. But uh, Mauser on deck. Runner goes. Ball four. And that will bring up our number seven hitter, Jake Mauser. Jack Mauser did it again. Jack Mauser. I've got my quality control sitting behind me correcting me. <laughs> and I need it, folks. <laughs> Jack takes first pitch, fouls it off back into the netting. Uh, Jack hit a home run on the first or second pitch. He saw his uh, first at-bat on home run to right field. Jack batting 349 with uh, now five home runs at least. Um and 11 RBIs. Jack is a sophomore from Golden Valley, Minnesota. Looking at a 1-1 count here. Now 2-1. Two, two down, runners on first and second.
three and one. Ump says two and two. Hmm. You must have called that a strike, that last one. Got it. Yeah, he's definitely given that outside. There's a foul ball, foul territory down third base side. Right field is giving chase. And he got it. I couldn't see. I was, I was waiting for the ump to give the, the sign. And the left fielder does come down with that foul ball right at the fence uh, in left field for the third out. Uh, but the Tritons score 11 runs on 11 hits in the bottom of that first inning. And it is 11-0 going to the top of the second. We'll be back on the Triton Nation Network. I think this is a designated hitter, Nelson. Outside on an 0-2 pitch. 1-2 count now. The first batter, uh, if you didn't hear, if you didn't see, the first batter grounded out shortstop for the first out. There's a swing and a miss. Nice catch by Goodwin to uh, get that um, foul tip for the third strike and the second out. Ian's third strikeout of the day. And now he faces number 25. TJ Olsen swing and a miss. Olsen the number nine batter for the day playing second base. Uh, swing and a miss on strike one. Olsen from Bismarck, North Dakota. Freshman. Freshman. 
A low one inside. Ball one. He gets ready to deliver the pitch. That's popped up. Ball ball for the third baseman, Trey Bird. Balls it in. Right at the pretty padding out there on the third base side and uh, put, pulls that in for a quick uh, top of the second inning. Uh, nice outing for Mr. Culver. Um, and the score remains 11-0 going into the bottom of the second. We'll be back on the Triton Nation Network. We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only bio manufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons. Jacob Ripplinger, Ripplinger from Rugby, North Dakota. Six foot, 170 pounds. And uh, I'm going to let Goodwin call Goodwin. Uh, so uh, our leadoff batter today uh, for the bottom of the second inning here for the Tritons will be Zach Goodwin, number four, our catcher, who uh, hit a double to right field his first at-bat. And have at her, Mr. Goodwin. No pressure. <laughs> Ball outside. Looks like he's got a lot of movement on his pitch, number three. Yeah, this uh, this this new pitcher, a freshman out of rugby, North Dakota. I have no idea what rugby. I have no idea where Rugby, North Dakota is, but. North of here. <laughs> Strike, Zaxxon's two and one. It's looking like Mr. Ripley is throwing a knuckleball as well. 3-1 now. The lead up batter, Zach Goodwin. Strike, full count. Talk louder. Zach Goodwin sits with a full count now, 3-2. The leadoff batter for the Tritons. Swings, grounds one to second base, hustling down the line, but it's thrown out by a step and a half. Caught that one off the end of the bat. So a uh, little different inning here for the Tritons than the, the first inning with a, a pop-up and, uh, and a grounder and uh, two down. Oh, no, there's one down. Sorry, no pop-up, but a grounder to the second baseman for the first out. Uh, and that brings up Jake Busson, who hit a double to left field his first bat, and he takes strike one. Inside pitch for ball one. Pitch 
go tie an owl. Count is two and one. Low and outside. Ball three. Three one count here to Boston. One out here in the bottom of the second inning. Triton's leading 11 0 on 11 hits. Curveball is sent deep, but deeply fouled down the left field line. Almost into the softball field there. Adjacent to us. Full count now. Be going back to the top of the order here. There's a high fly ball, left center field, and that's gone. And Bussin with a full count home run to left center field to make it 12 0 Tritons. Marquee is another Triton that just continues to hammer the ball. Yeah, we got a couple of those. Yeah. We, we, we have a few guys that are just on a tear. 104 exit velocity on that quote unquote fly ball. <laughs> so back to the top of the order. This is his third plate appearance, Nicholson, here early in the ball game. And he takes strike one on the uh, lower inside ed corner of the zone. Nicholson um, has a triple and something else. Oh, he said that caught him. Oh, hit by pitch. Just must have brushed his jersey as he's peeling away from that pitch. Oh, production's coming back up. Troy Berg now steps to the plate. Troy, um, two for two on the day. Berg's got a uh, RBI single to left field and a line drive double. Yeah, I think that's the one he slid in. Just made it, yep. It's a good relay. Pitcher uh, giving Cooper a little attention at first base there. Ooh, that was a wiggly pitch. Drops in there for a strike. We have another knuckleballer. Yep. Back to back knuckleballers. That one bounces in the turf. Ball two. Nice block by the catcher. Side, ball three. Three one count here to Berg. Bottom of the second inning. 12 a zero Tritons. If I'm right, Mark, Berg is from North Dakota. I, 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 should, I should know that. I should have that up. Yikes. <laughs> that looked like kind of a mercy call there. But Dick, Dickinson, North Dakota. Dickinson, North Dakota. I've been to Dickinson, North Dakota. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah. Lucky Dickinson. Oh, Troy just throws the bat out there, and it goes just foul the right field. Had kind of a defensive swing there, but like you said, just kind of threw it out there and uh, almost made something happen there. That's why you put the ball in play sometimes, you know? That was full count. Oh. 
There's a hard ground ball past the shortstop into left field. And that is a uh, single now for Berg. So Berg's got uh, two singles and a double now on the day. Up to bat next is Michael Seamer. Seamer is from Johnston, Iowa. I believe Johnston is a suburb of Des Moines. Correct. Is his family here today? I was. His dad is here today in the stands. I did see his dad. I was talking with Cooper's dad the other weekend, and he said that they faced them in high school, and he believes they never got Michael Seamer out. Huh. He was really glad when Michael graduated from high school and came to Iowa Central, so they had a year they didn't have to face him. Michael takes low and outside for ball one. Low for ball two. Yeah, Michael has, uh, even when he gets out, his at-bats look just really good and patient. You know, he's not, he doesn't seem to be swinging at a lot of bad stuff. But uh, he did, even as a freshman, he got a lot of at-bats last year. There's a outside pitch, bounces off the catcher's glove, and that will move the runners up to second and third. Yeah, but to your point, Mark, he finds barrels. He has a good approach, doesn't chase too often. Very disciplined hitter. That's a nice pitch down the middle there for a 3 1 count. One down here. Ducks on the pond, as they say. Runners on second and third. And there's, he rips one. Up the outfield barely over moves. the green monster for a home run and Seamer with a three run home run extends the Triton lead to 15. As we were just talking about Mark, he finds barrels. Yeah, he found that barrel. I think the left fielder took two steps and the center fielder took two steps <laughs> and they called it. There is activity going on in the bullpen. There is a mound visit. Looks like we are going to get a new pitcher here. All right, we will take a short break here um, and come back and introduce the new pitcher for you here on the Triton Nation Network. Network. Welcome back, folks. We have a new pitcher here, number 45, Lane Kinsella. Lane is from Harv. I would Montana. say Havre. Ha Havre. Havre. Far no, I'd say oh, Harv. Like yeah. Varv. Harv. Harv. Yeah, it's H A V R E. We'll so. go with that. Yeah, Harv, Montana. Harv High School. 
freshman, 5'10", 195 pounds. Uh, Right-handed pitcher, and he will be facing off against uh, Harrison Bowman. Bowman from Kentucky. He has been on fire. I believe he got the Iowa Central. No, the uh, the yeah the the their conference, the conference player of the, the week. Iowa Community College Conference yep. Player of the Week. It's been tearing it up. Yeah, he had two runs in one inning last weekend. Two home runs in one inning. There's a curveball that he pops up to right yeah. field, deep right field, kind of maybe blowing out a little bit, but the right fielder is able to pull it out, pull it in at the warning track for the second out. And that will bring up our right fielder, Pete Johnson. And Pete... Uh, Smoked a line drive, his last at bat. Pete is a uh, transfer from Butler University last year. He's a sophomore, and he's committed to Liberty next year. So he'll be heading out east to Liberty University. They got a good one there in Pete Johnson. Ball outside. 2-0 is the count. Two outs right now for the Tritons. Ooh, fouled straight back. Took a good hack at that one, Mark. All right. Takes that low for a ball. Pete's sitting at a 3-1 count right now. Good hitter's count. Looking for the ball to be in one spot, and if it hits that spot, it might go a long ways. Oh, ball four inside. Up next, we have Will Smoot, number 17 from Cottage Grove, Minnesota. There's really just no, the way that our, uh, the Tritons are hitting the ball right now, there's just no relief for these pitchers. It's just like power hitter after power hitter after power hitter right now uh, in our lineup. There's a swing and a miss. Will is seeing it very well. Throw back to first base. Peter slides in safe. That's popped that pops way up. up. Yeah, to the infield. Second base gets under it. Corrals it in for out number three. Heading to the top of three. We we're 15 0. And Iowa we will, Central Tritons. We'll be back on the Triton Nation Network. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons!
we are back for the top of the third inning. Ian Culver coming back out for his third inning of work. He's uh, tossed 38 pitches so far, so he'll be throwing his 39th here to number four. I think we're back to the top of the order for the Royals and Hugh Montgomery with Ball his one low. second at bat. He uh, popped out to the third baseman, his first at bat, and he takes ball one low. There we go. Strike right There's down the middle. Strike. There's a pop up. That's going to be trouble. That's going to. Oh. Yeah. Pete Johnson tries to make a diving catch and just misses it. Yeah, so a pop fly to shallow right center, and the center fielder and right fielder were giving chase but just couldn't get to it before it drops for a single. And since Pete dove for it, it gets bounces past him, but the center fielder was back covering nicely, but the uh, runner smartly gets to second base. So a uh, leadoff hit here for the Royals. Uh, he was hustling out of the box, that's yep. for sure. I thought they were going to get him at second there for a second. And this is the Victus pencil bat. <laughs> it is a unique paint job. We'll see if he can sharpen it up and put it to work. Nice, 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 nice tie. Took me a second to process the pun there. But uh, outside ball two. Inside for ball three. This is the catcher, Nicholas Smith. There we go. 3 1. Ethan's working hard to attack these hitters. There we go. There we go. Strike two. Catches that inside court edge there. Oh. A little too far inside. Must have been. For ball four. I think that's his third walk of the day. Runners on first and second. We had nobody out. First pitch high and outside for ball one. Be nice if he can get a double play ball here for his infielders. Pitcher's best friend. Oh, ball hit the Mike Seamer at first base. Mike bobbled it a little bit, so he only had, the only choice he had to go was to get the runner at first, but he was thinking about turning the double play. We got one out. Runners advanced to second and third. Paints the inside corner to the left handed batter for strike one. Pitches inside, gets away from Zach, hustles back to get it so the runner holds his ground at third. He 
Megan's trying to work that inside corner again. Two balls, one strike, one out. Runners at second and third. Foul ball. Strike two. Sitting at a 2 2 count here. Hear that hot wind howling out there. Yes, sir. Yes, got him. Looking. Nice pitch there. Drops in on the lower, end. lower inside part of the zone there for Ian's fourth strikeout and the second out of the inning. Yeah, that wind's just really racing right now. Yeah, the, the American flag is pinned, and it's a cold wind. Yeah, blowing across the field from the right field side. I'm sure from Ian's perspective, his fingers are cold, hard to get a good feel on this ball. Yeah, it doesn't help that we've had a couple of extended offensive innings, which is great for the score, but... <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh. oh, didn't go, apparently. Oh, appeal. Appealing. Oh. Safe. All right, we're one, one, one and one count. One ball, one strike, two out. This is the third baseman, Jacob Warnke, by the way, who struck out looking his first at bat. Takes the ball too high. Fastball fouled off back over the backstop. Count remains two and two. Or it is two and two now, sorry. It was two one before. I'm cold just listening to that wind. We're in a nice warm uh, press box up here. There we go. Get some chase on an outside pitch. Nice pitch, Ian. For the strikeout. Ian's sixth strikeout of the game, fifth strikeout of the game, I guess. Um, and that's the end of the third inning. Still 15-0 Tritons. We'll be back on the Triton Nation Network. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! All right, folks, welcome back. We are starting the bottom of the third inning. Yeah, the do up for your Tritons in this half inning. Uh, Mauser, Goodwin, and Bussin, uh, and bonus players. Um, and when these guys get on base. And we have a score right now of 15 nothing. Mauser, uh, one for two on the day with a home run and a pop out to left field. I think it was a foul ball. Yeah, that was right at the fence. Wind couldn't push it out. He takes ball one. Curveball is popped up 
Line drive, just over a leaping center fielder. Didn't get a good read on the ball, and uh, that line drive kind of ate him up. Actually, Mark, we got to have a correction. That was not Mauser. That was Griffin Finsky. Oh, out of seriously? Egan, Minnesota. They are switching the lineup. Oh, look at that, us. number 29. Number 29 looks like 23, you know? It could be. Depending and I on am how old. old your yes, eyes are. I am old. <laughs> Finsky now, huh? Yep, that was Griff Griffin Finsky, a pitcher, infielder, outfielder out of Egan, Minnesota. So he gets a double. Freshman. To center field. And now, now number up. 18, pinch hitting for Goodwin. Who's 18? 18 is Colin Ritchie. Colin. Out of Mound, Minnesota. Catcher, that's right, throws right. He's a freshman, 6'1", 200 pounds. And he's uh, at 0-2 count here. With a rudder on second base. Curveball swung through for the strikeout in the first out of this half inning. Josh Atano's in the game now. Number five from Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Steps up to the plate. So presumably Hatana will move to third base, replacing Bussin. Josh is a versatile infielder. He plays second, short, and third for the Tritons. Saw a lot of time at third and short last year, majority third. But would come in when Evan Borse would come out to close out the game. He's been playing a lot of second this year for the Tritons. Another inside pitch there. Two balls, no strikes. Throw back to second base, tried to pick the runner off, but that time he played did not work. Griffin was heads up on that, slid back in, no problem. Two oak count now to Hatano. One down, runner on second base. Here in the bottom of the third inning. And Hatano oh, with a Line drive to center field, but right at the center fielder. And this one, the center fielder, didn't even have to get a read on because he just had to stay where he was. He stayed where he was. <laughs> but Josh found a bear on that. He hit that ball hard, just right at the center fielder. And the center fielder is playing about 375 feet, about 10 feet in front of the that center field fence. So it's a hard line drive. So Luke Bohanek now uh, subbing in for Nicholson. Luke Bohanek from Bettendorf, Iowa. It's freshman, 5'10", 185 pound infielder. Did he get hit? He just got hit. Well, you know, Cooper got hit. So he's just taking Cooper's spot. Right. Um, gets hit by pitch. Yep. Just looking to see if he got hit in the shoulder or the head. I was not looking at the game. Yeah. yeah, right up in the neck ear area there, right? Yep. So I, we, I've seen some scary hits in that area before. Yes. All right, number 12 is stepping in here. Spencer Shit. Peterson. Infield, outfield. Bats right, throws right. He's a freshman, 5'11", 195 pounds. Takes strike one. Uh, he is from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Making me work. We're, they're making us work here with all these right? pinch hitters. We gotta stay on our game here, Culver. He takes. So he's 0-2 right now. 
Two down, runners on first and second. The uh, the pitcher here, what's his name again? Number 45, Lane. Uh, Lane. Lane Kinsella. Lane uh, doing a good job throwing throwing strikes, you know, making us put in play and do some stuff. And as soon as I say that, he throws two successive balls. 2-2 two -two count. Right-handed pitcher comes straight over the top. Ooh. High curveball there. Full three, count now. 3-2 two, two with two outs. The runners will be going as soon as the pitcher comes towards home plate. Oh, oh, hits another with a curveball. Another hit batter. Takes it off the shoulder on a curveball. 60 mile an hour curveball. Stepping in. Assuming he's taking over for third base is Jace, Jace Ulrich. Ah, he's Jace. A, he's a hometown hero out of Fort Dodge. First base. He was a star football and baseball player at Fort Dodge High School. 5'10", 215. Bats right, throws left. Takes ball one high. Got bases loaded here for Jace. Strike one. A 1-1 one, one count, two outs, bases loaded. Curveball high. Ball two. I totally jinxed the pitcher. I, I said he was doing a good job of throwing strikes, and <laughs> he has not thrown a lot of strikes since I said that. <laughs> oh, there we Jace. go. Jace takes a healthy hack at that, but follows it off over the first base dugout. 2-2, two, two, two outs. Bases loaded here in the bottom of the third inning. They were Tritons leading 15-0. 15, 15 runs on 15 hits. Curveball in the dirt. Full count now. Again, full count. Two outs. Runners, as soon as the pitcher starts his motion home, runners will start moving. And he went from the windup too. But ball four. And we are going to have a coach visit here. Not sure if we're going to see a new pitcher or I don't know how many there's some pitchers they brought with them that they got two more games. To, to, there's uh, some activity in the bullpen. It looks like somebody is coming out. Yep, so. we are going to get a new pitcher here, guys. So we're going to take a short break here and we will introduce the new Royals pitcher when we come back on the Triton Nation Network.
Toronto Farmers. And we are well. back. The new pitcher for the Royals, uh, number. What did we? Number, number six? six. William Carson from Carleton, Texas. A has fresh. To be, has to be a shot coming from Texas yeah. up to North Dakota. Yeah, he's. Uh, hopefully, he's got his long underwear on. <laughs> He's a freshman, 5 feet 11, 150 pounds. That's stepping into the batter's box, left-handed batter's box for the Tritons is Isaiah Scott from Toronto, Canada. Isaiah's an infielder, takes ball one outside, bats left, throws right, 5'10", 200 pound freshman. Isaiah takes an outside pitch, pops it up to right center. Right fielder comes in for out number three. And that's the end of the third inning for your Tritons. They score one run, extend the lead to 16-0, and we will go to the top of the fourth inning when we come back on the Triton Nation Network. Jeez, has got a nice mullet looking. Casino S is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only bio manufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. All right, we are back here in the top of the fourth inning. Tritons leading Lake State. Is it was that is that right? Lake Lake State. Something like that. The Royals. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and we have a new pitcher for your uh, Tritons, number twenty-seven, Jordan Latour, a freshman from Shakopee, Minnesota. And it is Jordan's birthday today. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Jordan. birthday Jordan Latour. Uh, Jordan with three appearances on the season, 1.2 innings pitched, one hit, three runs, three earned runs, four walks, uh, with a 16.20 ERA. But it's tough when you're um, coming in in the middle of the innings a lot. Um, but he's got three strikeouts and four walks on the season so far. He's a freshman again, 6'2", 215. Looks very strong on the mound. Lake Region State College. Lake Region State. Got that. <laughs> Todd's like, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Leading off for uh, Lake Region this inning, I believe, if it's still the same guy. I don't know if they're pitching people, but uh, the shortstop, Brodina, um, the number six hitter, should be leading off for... I think we have a full trade out of the defense. I do not believe that there is anybody that was playing where they were playing. Correct. So, so catching right now is um, Colin Ritchie. Yeah, Colin Ritchie. And at first base is Jake Ulrich. Jace Ulrich. Luke Mahonic at second base. Josh Titano at short. Uh, Spencer at third base. Colin Fenske at left field. There's a strike on the outside edge there. Isaiah Scott in center field and Brandon in right field. So uh, just really quick here, Ian Culver ends the day with three innings pitched, one hit, three walks, six strikeouts, very nice outing, 0.00 ERA. Uh, nice whip there as well. I don't have that in front of me, but uh, nice sure. outing by Mr. Culver. Jordan just came with a fastball on the outside corner there. He is up on his hitter. 
one ball two strikes just a little bit outside on that one but a good waste That's strike three. Fastball up and in for strike three at 90 miles an hour. So 90 mile an hour fastball. Throwing 90 as a freshman. It's looking good for Latour. Especially with the work they do here at Iowa Central. He's only going to get bigger and stronger. Yep. I think we got a new uh, hitter here, pinch hitter here at the DH spot, Keegan Wade, Parker, number 13 for the Royals. Out of Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. So uh, a Canuck here. He's used to this weather. He, this He's is like probably eating this up. He's, he wants to take his shirt off, you know. <laughs> Let's put some shorts on. He takes ball one outside. Nice pitch. Catches the inside edge there. It's going to be a tough one to hit on that. Yeah. He can keep hitting that spot on a right-handed batter. One-on-one -on -one count here to Parker. He's pinch hitting for uh, Brodina, I believe. All right, we're sitting two balls, one strike, one out. Jordan's pitching from the stretch. Oh, ball hit up the middle. Atano fields it, makes a nice throw to Jace. Jace picks it out of the ground. Route number two. Some bright shoes on this guy. Actually, I'm a batter behind here somehow, but uh, Ronald Nelson now hitting. Ooh. Takes that one off the fist in the short right field. A little, uh, definitely a bloop. Yes. A snurt, as somebody I know would call that. <laughs> um, over to right field. We got two outs, runner on first. Runner Bluff's, thought about going. Bluff's going to <laughs> going to second. Thinks better about it, but I'd love to see Colin Ritchie throw him out at second. Swing and a miss there for strike number two. 88 miles per hour there. Runner bluffs, goes back to first. Oh, oh Jace. Jace makes a nice backhand, back, like backpedal play. Hand extended outreach to snag that ball and make the unassisted out at first base for the third out to get us out of the inning. So uh, nothing, no damage there. A little uh, duck snort of a, of a, a hit there, but... Uh, your Tritons work out of the jam, and the score remains 16-0 going into the bottom of the fourth inning. We'll be back on the Triton Nation Network.
them back here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Do up for your Tritons are a bunch of new batters, I think. Um, so number 26 coming to the plate. We have number 26 is Brandon Sullivan. He's a sophomore, six foot, 175 pounds out of West Des Moines, Iowa. He's an outfielder, bats right and throws right. Do we have a new pitcher for Lake State Tour? Is that still number one? That is still or six, number, number six, six. I meant number from six. last inning. That's what I meant. It's not what I say. It's what I mean. Yeah. Brandon takes strike one. That's outside for ball one. Just a bit outside. <laughs> Just a bit outside. Swing and a miss. Brandon swings through that one. Saw one he liked. A 73-mile-an-hour fastball, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Stop it. I'm a nice guy. I am. That's up and out for ball two. 74. 2-2. Two -two. Count here to Sullivan. Look at that flag out in right field. Yeah, it is. We should get a shot of that flag if we can. Just blowing. That's an indication of how windy it is out here today, folks. But if you haven't been able to make many games here at Fort Dodge yet, Ooh, swing and a miss for strike three. You'll, you'll get to know that it is a rare day where there is no wind in Iowa. Yeah. Just depends on how hard it is blowing. Brandon struck out there for the first out. Step into the plate now. Jack Emanuel. Jack, Jack is an Emmanuel. infielder. Bats right, throws right. He's a sophomore, 5'11", 190 from Johnston, Iowa. Jack swings at the first pitch, pops it up to the infield, and shortstop comes in and makes the grab for out number two. I like the aggressiveness. Sees the pitch he likes, takes a good hack at it. Just not the result he wanted. So Finsky back out for his second at-bat of the game. He doubled his first at-bat. That nice uh, line drive into center field. And he takes ball one here. But two quick outs here for your Tritons in the bottom of the fourth, but leading 16-0. Finsky's got a few chances this year, Mark, and I've been impressed with him. He has a good approach, and he really finds barrels on the ball when given the opportunity. So I think he has a bright future with the Tritons. He is a freshman, again, I believe, out of Egan, Minnesota. Yep, yep. Another swing and a miss. two. Yeah, in four games, four appearances, uh, he's had six at-bats, hitting, hitting 500, um, two RBIs. Uh, a walk and strikeout, uh, one double, but now two doubles on today, and he looks at that outside pitch for strike three. The new batters are going to have to get uh, tuned in on that outside pitch. The ump is calling what I call that river between home plate and the batter's box. And that is the end of the bottom of the fourth. We'll bring you the top of the fifth when we get back on the Triton Nation Network.
All right, we are back for the top of the fifth inning. Mark Culver here with Todd Goodwin in the Triton press box. Bring Jordan Latour on for his second inning of work here. Made quick work of his first inning of work, so he's attacking the zone. So you can see from the uh, headliner there, the graphics, it's 16-0 Tritons here in the top of the fifth inning. Triton's have been very aggressive at the plate here and uh, getting some good pitching on this cold, windy day to keep um, Lake Region State Community College scoreless. I believe Jordan's fastball's been sitting in that 88 to 90 range. Ball one here to the leadoff batter for uh, the Royals. Um, uh, back to the top of the order with Hugh Montgomery. It's a good job from Colin Ritchie framing that pitch on the outside there. Pokes at that. Line drive foul down the right field line out of play. Being the dad of a catcher, you appreciate those subtle moves that can help earn your pitchers an additional strike. Inside, ball two. Montgomery one for two on the day, fly out to start and then a double. Um, I think that was that uh, kind of a bloop double there that uh, the Pete Johnson dove for and couldn't get. But he uh, gets, he looks, looks at strike three there for the first out of the top of the fifth inning. Nice pitch by Latour there. And that will bring up the catcher, Smith with his Damarini. Vic, Victus number two pencil bat. Yeah, only Todd Goodwin would know the actual model of the bat. That's the type of insight and knowledge that we're bringing to you here on the Triton Nation Network, yes. We didn't uh, even have to pay very much for that. Hours of research. <laughs> <laughs> 2 -oh quickly here to Smith. And Latour catches the inside with a 90 mile an hour fastball to get strike one. That's up for ball three. There's a hard ground ball past the diving first baseman. And that gets into right field for a hit. So one out hit here for the Royals. And uh, number 44, Peyton Richardson. So we have a new right fielder, presumably. We have a pinch hitter here, Richardson, coming in for Clemson. Bennett, Colorado. Lake Region State uh, doing some recruiting right. from all over the place. From Texas to yeah. Colorado to Nova Scotia. Swing and a miss. Strike one. One on one count here to Richardson. I was wondering if Jordan was going to start throwing some off speed, maybe induce a, a ground ball double play, but it looks like he's sticking with the fastball, which has served him well. That was ball inside, high and inside. 2-1 count, one out. Oh, just misses low there, I think. On the one about 20 seconds. Yeah. 
Pass ball high. Ball Peyton. four. Peyton works a walk there. We got runners on first and second. One out. Number 34, Marshall Herman. The left fielder steps to the plate. Herman was a hit by pitch and struck out looking. His two at previous at bats, 0 for 2 on the day. And there's a ground there's ball on the first pitch to Hatano at oh, short. He scoops it over to second, gets the force, but uh, so a fielder's choice. And a heads up play by Ulrich. He gets the relay, fires it back over to home as the runner from third was trying to get to home. And a nice play there by our catcher to tag the runner out at third and end the inning and end the game. So after five innings, um, after four and a half innings, your Tritons take the win at 16-0, remain undefeated on the season. They will finish the doubleheader today in probably about half hour, 45 minutes uh, again against Lake Region State here. So we will be back on the Tritation Network.
All right. Welcome back to Harlan <laughs> Complex. Harlan Rogers Complex, the Stark Family Stadium at Harlan Rogers Complex. Uh, your Iowa Central Tritons are about to start game two of the doubleheader here against, uh, I was told to write it down, Lake Region State Community College um, from North Dakota. Don't mind Mark. He's only been coming here for a year and a half. He'll yeah. catch on soon. Yeah, I'll catch on soon. Uh, you know, um, you know. just a quick review of the last few days. It's been a busy uh, last few days for your Iowa Central Tritons. Um, this is game three, or day three of doubleheader days um, for your Tritons. They started Thursday off. Thursday and Friday, they had a four-game series against Moberly Area Community College. Won all four. I believe all four were 10-run uh, rule um, games. Uh, the first game, they won 11-0 on... I'm sorry, the first game, they won 15-6 on Thursday afternoon. A, a nice little evening game Thursday evening, a 17-6 win under the lights for your Tritons. And then on Friday, they played two more against Moberly, winning 10-0 and 14-6. And then uh, earlier today, um, your Tritons took on Lake Region State College and defeated them 15 or 16-0? 16-0 uh, in five innings, four and a half, really. So a good uh, few days of baseball. Your Tritons are uh, checking out the pitching depth this week. Uh, lots of pitchers getting some extended um play here this week uh, the last game we saw quite a few pitch hitters come in and um, you know saw some freshmen take some good at bats in that so a good opportunity for the Tritons to uh, get some work here before their conference play starts in earnest uh, next week I yes believe. correct who do they play next weekend they have next weekend they are at DMAC they are at DMAC at DMAC yep. and on Wednesday Southwestern Community College Southwestern Iowa Community College it's like it's coming up to Fort Dodge to play. Yeah, so uh, it's a good note that next Saturday the, your Tritons will be on the road for the first time since February. Uh, they've had a nice string, well, since they were down in Kansas City earlier uh, this month, actually. But they've had a nice string of uh, home games here, uh, gotten comfortable, but a beautiful facility uh, to play some baseball games. So uh, in this game, our uh, second of two games today, um, our starting four, your Tritons, will be Ryan Ohm uh, from Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, Ryan, a freshman, uh, getting a lot of good action. He's um, Ryan's been pretty dominant when he's, he's gotten his opportunities to be on the mound. Yep. Pitching deep into games and really has a good mix of pitches. Yeah, so this will actually be his fourth uh, start. Um, his he's had five appearance five appearances and three games started. He's won three of those those games. Three all record, one save, two complete games, 21.2 innings pitched, nine hits, six runs, five earned runs, and five walks. Hopefully the numbers that I am giving you line up to what you see on the screen here. Um, but. Uh, 2.08 ERA, yes it is, and a 0.65 whip. So Ryan really showing uh, some good control. Um, you know, he's his, he's at 9.14 strikeouts per game, per nine innings. Um, getting a lot of good ground outs to, to go with those strikeouts um, and really being dominant so far. So we'll see how he does here in the uh, windy, cold conditions at Fort Dodge. Um, I do not have a lineup for um, Lakes Region State uh, for the Royals, but uh, we will call those batters and introduce them as they come up. Uh, but going around the horn for your offense today for the Tritons, um, as I said, Ohm on the mound. Catching for Ohm is uh, number 18, Richie. At first base is... Number 30, Jace Ulrich at second base. Number five, Josh Atano at third base. Number nine, Bussin at shortstop. I'm sorry, at third base is uh, Bohanic. Shortstop is Bussin. Left field is Scott. Center field is Logan. And right field is Fenske. 
I believe this is the first time our center fielder, TJ Logan, is getting the opportunity to start a game. Excited to see what he brings to the table. From what, St. Paul, Minnesota. What number we got here as a leadoff batter for? We have number, number four. four. Hugh Montgomery, who led off the last game. Ohm delivers a nasty wow. curveball with a lot of movement on it, but it was for a ball. Two balls, one strike. Oh, looks like they had the board wrong. That was strike three. Sorry about that, folks. So, strikes out the leadoff batter here. Not just me. <laughs> it's not just you, Mark. <laughs> Now we've got uh, number 28 batting, Tyler Kinjin. Tyler's from Bismarck, North Dakota. Played his high school ball at Century High School. Quickly 0-2 count here for Ulm. He's a freshman, 5'10", 160 pounds. He's listed as a catcher utility player. He didn't he didn't touch that? Wow. So a swing and a miss on a third strike. It looked to me like he got a piece of that. I, th I thought he took it too, but but he took off right away. Yep. And uh so it was a wild pitch on the outside and uh, swinging dropped third strike, but uh, Richie's able to grab it on a bounce off the backstop and throw it over to first for the out. So two down now here in the top of the first and number 24, Caden Siwak is at the plate. Caden with a K-A-E from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Another Canuck. Gets that outside edge. Hit that all day, Ryan. Uh, Ryan, I think, exclus exclusively pitches from the stretch. He's up one ball, two strikes, two outs, and strike. Oh, oh! I thought that was at a similar three. spot, but apparently not. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Ooh, right back at him. Gloves it and throws to Jace. Smooth, first. smooth as silk there on the mound. <laughs> Helping himself out with a 1-3 out to end the top of the first. As pitchers like to say, they're the best athletes on the field. <laughs> of course they are. And we will be back for the bottom of the first and your batting lineup for the Tritons when we come back on the Triton Network. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only biomanufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. How to pronounce it. And we're back. 
Tritons uh, taking their first at bats here in this game two of the doubleheader today. And leading off for your Tritons today is Luke Pahanek, the third baseman. He will be followed up by the second baseman, Josh Atano, and then the third baseman, uh, Jake Busson. And on the first pitch, smashes Pahanek smashes a hard ground ball into center field for a single. So nice start there for Bahanek and your Tritons. And that will bring up our second baseman, Josh Hitano. Hitano out of Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Josh is playing some first base towards the or shortstop towards the uh, end of the last game. Ooh, and Josh again on the first pitch. This hard to the right center gap, and it is down. Josh will get a double as the runner was holding up to see if he was gonna get caught or not. He comes into third, Josh is in at second. Yeah, that was, a, that was a high fly ball that was just carrying, carrying, and the center fielder was giving chase in that right center field area and just couldn't get a beat on it, and it just goes over his glove as he was trying to catch up to it to uh, get to the wall and give Hitano that double. Just misses an RBI if, if it had been a, if the runner could tell that the center fielder wasn't get, gonna get to it, they would have scored that run for sure. But um, good, you know, smart base running, hold up, wait for the, the ball to fall. And now- uh, Jake Busson is up. The third the baseman. The plate. Takes ball one. For the Tritons. Nobody out, runners on second and third. Again, runners got on. Uh, Luke Bohanek had a screaming line drive up the middle. Josh Otano, oh, that was a, almost an automatic replay of Bohanek's throws coming into the infield. They do not throw home. Another hard single. Two RBI single here for the for the shortstop for today, Jake Busson. So uh, our left fielder, number seven, Isaiah Scott, steps to the plate now. He'll be uh, followed up by uh, our first baseman, Jake Ulrich, Jace Ulrich. And uh, Scott takes ball one in the turf. That gets past the catcher, and uh, Busson is keenly aware, that was takes a good, second base. A good dirt ball read there by Jake. Heads up base running. And there's a, there's a perfect example of kind of the outside calls at the ump. And I don't know if this is the same up behind home plate that we saw last game, but uh, definitely giving a little extra real estate on the outside of those of the base. Slips on the mound, but gets uh, Scott to swing through anyway for strike two. So one, two count here to Scott. But uh, keep an eye on that during the game. Um, you know, on both sides, the right for right-handed batters, left handed batters, we're seeing a little bit of extra real estate on the outside part of the plate there for the strike zone. That one's in the turf. Nice block by the catcher. For ball two. It's a good healthy hack there by Isaiah, but followed that off over the third base dugout. It's an at a 2-2 count, nobody out, runner on second. Well outside there for ball three. Full count now to Scott. He is not that generous outside. Nope, not that generous. I'm sure you guys may be able to tell how windy it is just by the camera shake. There's a pop-up out of play down the third base side into the... Uh, into the bullpen. Bullpen. The Royal Bullpen. Full count here to Isaiah Scott. No outs in the bottom of the first inning. Oh, 
And there's a line drive to right center field. Nice hit. It's going to get to the wall. That's going to be an RBI double at least for Scott. Yeah, he's going to hold up for an easy stand-up double second base. That extends the Tritons lead to 3-0. Now we're going to see our first baseman, Jace Ulrich, uh, Fort Dodge uh, native, so hometown boy. Jace had opportunities, from my understanding, to play college Oh, on oh, the first man. pitch. Jace hits this man. one hard and over the wall for over a home three, run. Foster. That's a Fort Dodge home run brought to you by Jace Ulrich. And Jace had opportunities to play football and baseball. He chose to stay home in the Fort Dodge area and play baseball for the Tritons. He wasted no time on that one. First pitch, nice swing, shows off the mullet. The sweet, sweet mullet. <laughs> And it's 5-0 uh, Tritons. And the Tritons uh, starting this game like they started off the last uh, first game where we scored 11 runs in that first inning. And uh, Tritons well on their way to repeating that in the second game here. Which is really good on the season. We have not played down to our competition. They have played their game and not played down to anybody else's game so that is good to see but as Mark alluded to earlier conference play is going to start heating up and there is some very challenging teams in the so, Iowa Community College Conference. Another first pitch swing uh, by our right fielder Griffin Penske and he hits a hard ground ball to the first baseman. First baseman does a nice job fielding it and stepping over to first for the unassisted out. So one down here in the bottom of the second inning, and our center fielder, T.J. Logan, will step to the plate and see what he can do against the Royals here. And that's a ball outside. T.J. batting from the left side. And hits left, throws left from St. Paul, Minnesota. What high school did he go to? Do you know? I don't know. Let's find that out. Oh, TJ takes a shot over to the left field. Oh, left fielder right by the warning track. Brings that in for out number two. Yeah, we need, like we, it. We need some intel. I want to I wanna know what uh, high school uh, TJ went to. Um, now number 35. Eric Nomo, our designated hitter. I think I'm saying that right. Numo, Eric Numo from West Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, Eric has had one at bat. Um, and he struck out. So Eric getting some good quality uh, time here today. TJ, it appears, with the De La Salle High School. De La Salle, that makes sense. All right, oh. there's a high fly ball. He turned on that one, and the right fielder doesn't even, he just turns and looks and watches it just soar over that green monster for another Triton home run. That was a no-doubter right off the bat. Wow, that Eric, one, uh, that was a no-doubter. That's the first at bat I think that I've seen Eric have this season, and he wastes no time making an impression on that. 6-0 Tritons now. <laughs> In the dugout, if you could see, we could yeah. hear them from the press box. Uh, what a great second at bat for... <laughs> what was that his second that at was, bat? That uh, was, according to the stats here, that was his second at bat. So great at bat for uh, Eric there. All right, so uh, our catcher, Colin Ritchie, now steps to the plate, starts off with strike, strike two. So Eric had walked into the dugout, and of course the camera's not on the dugout, so you guys weren't able to see everybody was ignoring him. But, as, but I'm sure you could hear it. As he hit his first home run, and then they all hogpiled on him, so... 
Oh, just misses up, I'm assuming. Maybe in. But uh, ball right. one. One, two here. Curveball. Colin has to duck to get away from. Two, two, two outs for number 18, Colin Ritchie, the catcher for the Tritons. That was a nice curveball. Must have missed inside. We got a full count now. Good at bat. Colin falls that one off. Living for another opportunity. Full count here in the bottom of the first inning. Triton's putting up six runs so far in this opening inning. Uh, two outs, nobody on. Here's the delivery. And that's a nice strike on the lower end of the zone there. And uh, Colin watches that for strike three. So a great first uh, inning for the Tritons. Six runs on six hits. Uh, two big monster home runs. Uh, and the Tritons take a 6-0 lead into the second inning. We will be back on the Triton Network. For trusted work on your next project, choose Rash Construction. A third-generation, family-owned company, Rash Construction has been proudly serving Fort Dodge and surrounding areas for 70 years. We specialize in excavation and grading, site utilities, site planning and development, and GPS grade control. From private and public projects to larger-scale commercial projects, we have the knowledge, experience, and technology to get the job done right. Rash Construction. Safety first, last, and always. Other life-threatening diseases, a cure exists with bone marrow transplant. More young people are needed because these donors provide the greatest chance for transplant success. Please take the first step of being someone's cure by logging on to bethematch.org for your free swab kit. Let's score a touchdown for more people who need a bone marrow transplant. On the Triton Network, your Tritons with a 6-0 lead over Lake Region State Community College out of North Dakota. And Ryan Ohm takes the mound for a second inning of work. Had a nice quick first inning of work. Um, quickly pulling up the stats on that. Come on. Uh, 12 pitches, two strikeouts, uh, no hits, no walks. And he will uh, see carry that momentum into the second inning against... Some guy here. Um, Number six. I, no. No. 30. 30 something. 34. 34. Or six. I guess I was looking at the score. <laughs> six nothing. The one zero anyway to this batter, the leadoff batter for the Royals here. And he sends a hard ground ball to the first baseman. Jace, Jace with a oh, oh. Jace makes an oh. excellent dive. I thought for sure that was gonna get past him, but Jace somehow gobbles that up like a hungry, hungry hippo and on his butt turns to uh Ohm, who was doing a good job of covering the base. Uh, but just, just they just couldn't make the connection. Uh, just didn't catch the ball. Yeah, Ohm just, didn't, could, just could keep it in his glove. Otherwise, they would have had the out. But a nice, pretty play um, results in an infield hit um, for that batter. Marshall Herman, the designated hitter. Tough play for Ohm as he's trying to get over to first base, find the base, and catch the ball all at the same time. But a phenomenal play by Jace to knock that down yeah. and get there. It was that was beautiful. I thought for sure I was getting past him, but it just like have a day, Jace. Yeah, have stop a, day. a ball like that, hit a bomb over the left field wall, and show up with a mullet. Nice pitch, Strike. from Ryan. I heard from uh, Jace's mom that his grandparents are watching. So uh, shout out to uh, Jace's grandparents. Um, nice day for nice game here for Jace. And we're only at the top of two. Right. On a one-on-one -on -one count, the batter uh, sends one foul off the roof of the clubhouse there on the first base side. The newly built clubhouse for the Tritons. Beautiful. I'd love a tour of that sometime, by the way. Yes. Nobody's offered one yet. 
be either. Uh, number 22. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong team. <laughs> Another foul ball down the third base side this time. Number 22, uh, Ronald Nelson uh, at the plate right now with a 1-2 count. He's playing second base today for the Royals. His first at bat, he got sawed off at the hands, but it dropped into right field. Oh, pulls this one hard. That was the previous game, I believe. Oh, that was the previous yeah, game. This is his first at bat in this game. At... Sorry. That's okay. That's Just okay. remember the shoes. Sometimes I like to be the guy making the correction. Usually it's people correcting me, so this is this is okay. This is a good moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> One and two count to Nelson. And there's a ground ball to Double play ball. Short. One, there's one at second, yeah, and he get the makes the turn play. and gets the double play. So a nice start of the double play there by... Uh, who's that short today? Bussin. Bussin, thank you. Jake Bussin starts the double play to Josh Atano at second to Jace Ulrich at first. So two down now here in the top of the second inning. Triton's leading 6-0 and number 13 for the Royals. Steps to the plate, swings and misses on the first offering from Ohm. Keegan Wade Parker playing first base. Ooh, nice pitch. That I thought that was going to hit That's the batter, gonna... and that came right back in to the strike zone. That was a beautiful pitch there for strike two. I'm right. surprised the batter didn't move out of the way. But uh, And there, uh, on a pass ball, I'm going to say, swings through it, but uh, again, Richie's able to play it off of the backstop and toss it over to Ulrich at first to get the out and the strikeout. So another nice, efficient outing by Ohm. Picks up his third strikeout. And we, the score remains 6-0 going to the bottom of the second inning. And we'll be back on the Triton Network. All right, welcome back. Uh, we have a new pitcher on the mound for Lake Region State Community College, and that would be number seven, Brady Omdahl, out of Fordville, North Dakota, a sophomore, 5'10", 215 pounds, right-handed pitcher. Um, he will be facing off against, uh, I think we're back to the top of the order, with uh, Luke Bohanek who hit a single, hard ground ball for a single at his first at bat. And so uh, do up for your Tritons is Bohanek, Hitano, and Bussin. So Luke Bohanek playing third base today. Wearing the stirrups. Steps into the box. What kind of bat is he swinging? He is swinging a Cat X Marucci. What do, you, what do you know about that bat? It's a good bat. He swings it really well. Yes, he does. Ball one. What kind of shoes is he wearing? Are those... Are those those are the Adidas. Those, those, those are like Adidas. Those are sponsored by Adidas. Yeah, there you go. It's a complete package. Oh. 
High fly ball to mid center field. Center fielder dancing around a little bit there, but gets underneath it and pulls it away for the first out. Josh Atano steps into the box. In playing second base this game. He is a sophomore from Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Take strike one. Nice pitch. I dropped nicely into the lower part of the strike zone there. And Hatano kind of Josh below Hatano. inside pitch, golfs that as a bloop single. The shortstop gave chase to it, but uh, couldn't make the over the shoulder catch. And it drops in for a single. Uh, I think Josh got that one off the hands a little bit. I'm sure, especially in this cold weather, his, his hands may sting a little bit after that swing. But all in all, it's a base hit. Josh is on first base, one out. For Jake Bosson at the plate. Jake takes ball one inside. Pitcher throws back to first. Josh recognizes the move early, gets back standing up, no problem. Josh goes to steal second, slides in easy. That hit him? I think the ball hit him. Yeah. Stolen base for Josh Tano. Runner in scoring position for Jake. Actually, the way Jake's been swinging the bat, the runner's on first base, they're in scoring position. Yeah, yeah. so uh, Jake Buss and our shortstop steps to the, to the plate. And on the first pitch, sends a grounder to the shortstop. Shortstop picks it up and scoops, sends it over to first for the out. Tano was basically standing right in front of the shortstop. The, the grounder kind of went almost right through his legs. Yes. Uh, but Hitano uh, was, had a pretty healthy lead, but re retreated back to second on the grounder. Um, so he stays at second. Isaiah Scott up the plate. Takes high for ball one. Uh, Scott hit a double, his first at bat. The, uh, the thermometer says 47 degrees. Um, it's got to feel like it's 35 or something with this uh, north-northwest wind at 12 to 23 miles per hour. A lot closer to 23 than 12, I think. And that's a pop-up high, skied high, right behind second base. The shortstop uh, shuffles over and pulls that away for the third out. So uh, no runs in that inning for your Tritons, but score remains 6-0 going into the top of the third inning, and we'll be back on the Triton Nation Network. You gotta believe without fear. You gotta keep going, keep breathing. When you face a day, it feels like you're gonna CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. 
Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons. And we're back here in the top of the third inning. Your Tritons taking on Lake Region State Community College. And Ryan Ohm back out for his third inning of work. He's got three strikeouts so far. No hits, no runs. And he's facing off against number five. Um, Ethan Weir, the third baseman. And he fouled off the first pitch down the third baseline for strike one. Nice pitch there for strike two. He gets locked up on that one. He wasn't sure where that was coming. He thought it was inside, froze, and it just bends right over the plate. Swing and a miss for strike three and Holmes' fourth strikeout of the day. I believe that's a slider and that is a lot of movement on that. This is why I got Todd up here for the, the accurate uh, and insightful pitch analysis. And that's a nice pitch on the outside edge there for like strike one. Two seam fastball, with some movement in. Low on outside, can't get him to chase. Ball one. What a one count. One down, nobody on here in the top of the third inning. Did they give did they did they give Chase or or Ryan the the error there on that? I play? don't know. I they must have. Yeah. Yeah. The pitcher, you gave it to Ohm because he dropped the pit. Yeah, he dropped yeah. it. I, I was going to say, I would yep. assume that that error would have gone to the pitcher. Yeah, yeah, because Jace made an awesome play. Um, I, I don't know that I would have assumed that that would have been an out, but yep, yeah, that's, you know, that's good professional scorekeeping there. There's a swing and a miss for strike two. Full count now to number one, Braden Ennert. Um who's the catcher for this game. And on a full count, Ennert fouls one straight back over the netting. That was a good defensive swing. Really shortening up after having two strikes on him. Oh, there's a high he fly ball hard. deep to left center field but our TJ, TJ like looking like uh, a professional center fielder out yeah. there just chases it down and catches it right in front of the wall a little hint of uh, Byron Buxton or something there <laughs> he was out there afraid of how hard he's going to hit the wall there I was not sure anybody was going to catch up to that one no but nice play by TJ to get that second out uh, catches it over his shoulder almost going into the wall out number two. Ooh, a little sunshine lighting up the field infield there. Uh, so now oh, I'm facing number three. Come on, update. All right, two balls, no strikes, two outs. There's a line drive over the second baseman, Hitano, into right center field for a two-out single. That was the third baseman, Jacob Ripplinger. Uh, sorry, it took a while for my computer to refresh there and get that there. but Back to the leadoff hitter, I think, top of the order here, number four. Yes, we are. Yep, good catch there. Hugh Montgomery, the left fielder. And runner goes, throw from 
Nice throw. From Richie, nice throw. Gets the runner for the third out. Good tag by Josh Tano. Great throw by Colin Ritchie to end the threat. And that's uh, the end of the top of the third. We'll be back with your Triton offense here in the bottom of the third on the Triton Nation Network. Welcome back to the Triton Nation Network. Iowa Central taking on Lake Region State Community College here in the bottom of the third inning. Triton's leading 6-0. And uh, the Coming at you live from Harlan Rogers Sports Complex, just north of Fort Dodge. Beautiful, beautiful complex, by the way. Um, the Royals pitcher, Brady Omdahl, out for his second full inning of work here. And he will be facing... Jace Ulrich, who's leading off for your Tritons, who hit a monster bomb uh, his last at bat. He looks at a curveball that is in the turf for ball one. It'll be uh, Ulrich Penske Logan here to lead off for your Tritons in the bottom of the third. Penske. Fenske, not the race car driver Penske, but Fenske, sorry. 2 0 count here to Ulrich. And that's a nice pitch on that inside edge of the zone for strike one. Um, I think we uh, we usually have that. Oh, another, it's another high fly ball. Is that going to be another bomb? That's oh. off the wall, up high up the wall. It bounces off the green monster, and Ulrich in with a double. And Ulrich flexing some muscle today in the batter's box with a home run and a double. It's double high off the wall. And the Tritons start off the third inning with a leadoff double. And that'll bring up uh, Griffin Fenske playing right field today. Nice block by the catcher. Ball one. There's a hard ground ball. The third baseman does a nice job of snagging that. One hop throw to first base. Yeah. Wow. Third baseman snags that, kind of does a little turn, gets up, fires over to first to get Fenske. And Ulrich stays at second. So uh, one out now here. That was, that was not a soft ground ball. No. The third baseman did a very nice job of snagging that. And TJ Logan steps to the plate. Uh, TJ had a deep fly ball to uh, right field. His last, I, I think. I think it was deep. To uh, left field. Left field. Left field. Yep. Left field. That's his last at bat. Takes ball too high and out. Really nice hitters caught right here. Two zero. One out. Swing and a miss on an outside pitch. Although, if he hadn't swung, I guarantee you that would have been a strike. <laughs> that could have been called a strike. That 
Catches. Oh, catches the basement of those own there for strike two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Let's see what TJ's two strike approach is here. There we go. Takes one off the end of the bat, foul back into the netting. kind of bad is he swinging he is swinging the Louisville Atlas last year's model takes ball three there full count now to Logan fluorescent orange and blue There's a line drive up the middle into center field. They're sending Ulrich home, and they're not even going to make an effort at the relay. And Ulrich is in with a RBI single from Logan. Nice hard hit, hit up the middle by TJ. That was a nice hard hit. So 7-0 Tritons now here in the bottom of the third inning. So Eric Nuno. Numo up to bat from West Des Moines, Iowa. Freshman, 5'10, 195. Looks a lot taller than 5'10 to me, but who's taking the measurements? Not me. This is his third at bat of the season. First at bat was a walk, second at bat was a bomb. I oh! And Logan's going on a bounce pitch. Bounce was off the catcher, but he was he had a healthy, healthy lead. And he, he went, and the ball was rolling away from the catcher, and there was no way he was going to get to that ball and, and get the speedy Logan. So heads up, base running by Logan on that. TJ's in scoring position, and he takes TJ. Going for third with standing up. Slide, buddy, slide. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Hopefully the coach is telling him that right now. He was over halfway to third base when the uh, pitcher was going to home, so he slowed down going to third, which made it much closer play than it needed to be. But, again, good base running. And there's a line drive into left field, bounces right in front of the left fielder. Logan holds up just a bit to make sure it bounces, and he scores. So an RBI single for Numo, and good base running. Kind of reminds me of... Uh, uh, Zach Goodwin on manufacturing some runs there. So Logan moves himself from first to third and puts himself into position to uh, score easily on that line drive single. So Eric could call it a career right now. He'd be batting a thousand. <laughs> so in his two plate appearances, uh, he has hit a home run and walked, apparently. And now it's a single, so three plate appearances. Yep, two today. And he goes on a curveball, sliding, and he is in safely with a stolen base. So Colin Ritchie, the catcher now at the plate, and uh, looking at a one and one count. We're here with one out, and now a runner on second base. And on a one-on-one -on -one count, he pops it way, way up. That's going to move around with the wind, but the shortstop's able to get behind second base in shallow, shallow center field and pull that in for the second out. Colin just missed that one. So back to the top of the order. And uh, Luke Bahonik with his third at bat, his third plate appearance of the day. He's got a single and a, a fly out, flew out to a right field. And he takes ball one in the turf. Nice block by the catcher for Lakes region. Low ball two. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Runner on second. Go 
uh, in the turf again for ball three. Pickoff play at second, but slides back in safe. Ormdahl with 31 pitches so far. No strikeouts. He catches the baseman again there for strike one on a 3-0 count. And Bahanek looks at ball four and takes first base. Josh Atano stepping up to the plate now. Number five for the Tritons, playing second base. Atano two for two on the day with a double and a single. Ball too high. Ball one. That one just a bit outside. <laughs> just a bit outside. Tool here. Josh is looking for a pitch, one spot, but if he gets it, I'm sure he'll take a healthy hack at it. And he Hard did. ground ball oh. to the shortstop. And easy force play at second for the shortstop. And that ends the bottom of the third. But not before your Tritons add two more runs to make it 8-0. Tritons going into the top of the fourth inning. And we'll be back on the Triton Nation Network. are back for the top of the fourth inning. Ryan Ohm out for his fourth inning of work. Uh, I'm trying to not cause problems in the booth, but I'm good at causing problems. Mark's getting scolded <laughs> by Josh Kirkhoff right now. <laughs> for telling you. That the I score feed is down when indeed I lost my Wi Fi connection. <laughs> oh, I'm such a funny guy. So Ryan fires in a fastball for strike one. Back to the top of the order for Lakes Region. Oh, Ooh, nice. nice foul tip for strike two. Reared back there and just blew it by him. Ryan just delivered his 40th pitch of the game. He's got four strikeouts so far after three innings of work. Working on his uh, fifth strikeout here, but uh, one and two count to the leadoff batter, Hugh Montgomery, left fielder. 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. Ryan trying to get him chase that low outside pitch. And 
Montgomery fouls that off to the towards the third base dugout there. Two two count. What kind of bat does he have? Green one. <laughs> I stumped him. I finally stumped him. Oh, not sure where that missed. That looked like a really good pitch. That looked there. like a really good pitch. I think. I was gonna say maybe he's calling it reaching hot. Uh, yeah, high. high. I, I think I think this his zone is a little short. Um, probably a little deep. Probably a little lower than we would think it should be, but definitely gracious on the outside. Ooh. And there's a. Did that drop in foul or fair? Nope, foul. that was foul. Ju must have just dropped in a little foul down the right field line there, uh, thankfully. Thankfully, the umpire was standing on the first base. Yep. Foul line, the right field foul line. This count remains full here for Montgomery. Yep. It took, it took him a little bit of time, and Montgomery's not happy with that call. But uh, he, uh, his attempted check swing went too far, and he is out on strike three. So Ohm's fifth strikeout of the game, first out here at the top of the fourth inning. And now the right fielder, Tyler... Kleingen steps the plate and takes strike one. Same bat. Still don't know what it is. Still don't know what it is. There's a chopper. Doesn't get very far. Ohm comes in, picks it up, fires over to first. Nice fielding play by Ohm to get the out. Quick transition from glove to hand. Ohm's just kind of showing off today. Isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's a, a couple of nice fielding plays out there, throwing some good strikes. Guess that's how they control. do it from Rochester. They do, I guess so. I guess so. So two outs now here in the top of the fourth inning. And the center fielder, Caden Sywak, steps to the plate. Ryan fires the fastball that clips the outside corner. 87 mile an hour fastball. Swing and a miss on a slider. Oh no, 86 mile an hour fastball. Oh and two quickly, two down. Here comes the sweeper. Look oh. at the movement on that. <laughs> it did. Just a little too far outside for this hump. One and two. He goes back to the fastball here, Mark. And there's a ground ball to Ulrich at first. He picks it up, taps the first for the unassisted out. And a nice quick one, two, three inning for your Tritons here in the top of the fourth inning. And we'll be back with uh, Bussin, Scott, and Ulrich leading off for your Tritons on the Triton Nation Network. We are back, and we have a new pitcher on the mound for Lake Regent State Community College. Trying uh, to figure out his number. Mark number. is not happy with the jersey and the <laughs> no, number. No, they're horrible, horrible uh, numbers on the jerseys there. But uh, number eight, Jacob Warnke from Laramore, North Dakota. 
Laramore High School in Laramore, North Dakota. Five a freshman, five feet ten inches tall at 165 pounds. And he'll be going up against our shortstop, Jake, Jake Busson. He drives that baseball like it's getting hit by a bus. <laughs> And he takes ball one <laughs> outside. Jake is um, one for two on the day with a single and a ground out to the shortstop. And he, he pops hits. one up, shortstop backpedaling into shallow left field. And he's able to pull that in on the back pedal for the first out. And that will bring up our left fielder, number seven, Isaiah Scott. Isaiah is also one for two on the day, but let off with a double. His first at bat. And he takes ball one on the outside. Ooh. That That's somehow awful. got past the catcher. <laughs> got past the catcher on the fly and... Uh went off the umpire's foot. I'm sure he's thrilled about that. 2-0. 3-0 up high. Yeah, this catcher might not get any frame jobs after getting hit in the foot like that. Nope. There's a strike on a 3-0 count. Must have had the take sign. Yeah. 3-0 take. There's a hard ground ball through the, oh, the second baseman makes a nice sliding get, grab at that to keep it to go into right field, but not in time to catch the runner. He gets up and just decides not worth making the throw and risking an error. Yeah, so, for, but, he, but he made it. I, I, Lakes region took a step that way and did not take more steps back to first base. Uh, Just kind of sat there and watched a second baseman make a play. And then, and then he wasn't there to cover the base. Realized. Nice. Uh-oh. But, but the second baseman made a really nice play to get there. Some good range there yeah, by that second baseman. He ranged a long way to, the left, to his left side. So uh, hot hitting Jace Ulrich now at the plate. He's uh, got a home run and a double under his belt already. So is that an error by the first baseman or is that an infield hit? Hit is the official ruling. Jace, foul ball. Foul ball down the third baseline, just foul. One, two count here to Jace. One out, runner on first. Runner goes. And Jace, Jace with a monster bomb. He's looking at the dugout, and that's over the wall for a two-run home run. And Jace is feeling it today, his second home run of the day. And that extends the Triton lead to 10-0. Jace's third RBI on the day. Wow. Have a day, Jace Ulrich. Have a day, Fort Dodge native, Jace Ulrich. It's got to be the mullet. Got to be the mullet. Woo! Yeah, he gets that ball up in the air, and the wind's helping a little bit, but uh, that ball didn't need much help. I don't think it. No. <laughs> it would have been blowing in at 50 to stop that. <laughs> now batting is the right. Oh, another one. And that's. That is hammered another no doubter brandon sullivan oh no this is that's uh Fenske. i didn't i wasn't even looking i'm looking down at i was looking to see who was at the plate and all of a sudden i hear uh griffin the Fenske. roars and that was over left field wall as well with a no doubt wow like jace's was majestic with high arc and everything Finsky's just got out of here in like two seconds 
The freshman showing off today a little bit. TJ Logan. And now TJ Logan steps to play. He wants some. The umpire had to get more baseballs because the Titans are <laughs> knocking them out of the park. Somebody uh, call Amazon, get us some more baseball shipped here. There's a swing and a miss. Pulled his head a little bit on that swing. I think with all these home runs getting hit, guys are trying. Yeah, yeah, they want theirs. Here we go, another hit up the middle seat. Oh, sure mound took a little nice bit play. of that hit the mound a little funky. It took a little bit of speed off of it, and the shortstop was able to get uh, in front of that, pick it up, and throw over to first for the out. So two down now here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Titans leading 11-0. You know, Mark, looking at this and just seeing how deep the Tritons lineup is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, they have a stellar starting lineup. It's hard to crack that first lineup, but they, they are deep at every position, which bodes well for the future. Yeah, definitely bodes well for, you know, conference play and that when they're playing more back-to-back -back games. Coach Stein and his staff do a really good job recruiting, getting in a lot of top talent from all over the Midwest and even internationally. North America, I should say. Yeah. Eric Numo, the designated hitter at the plate now, and with a 3 0 count and takes strike one. Numo's got his own home run on the day and a single, so two for two on the day. Swing and a miss. Full count now. Looks like there's some activity in the bullpen for Lakes Region. Curveball. That is sent deep. Is just that out too? That's a home run. That was just inside the foul pole, I believe. But another home run for Numo, his second home run of the day. Yeesh. And your Tritons have hit one, two, three, four. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Four home runs on the day? It's, no, it seems like we should have more. Five home runs. Five home runs on the day. Two of them by Numo. Two of them by Ulrich. And that's going to be the end of the day for... Uh, number eight. Number eight. And we're going to get a new pitcher here from the bullpen. And we will be back after a short break to introduce the new Lake Region State pitcher. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only bio manufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysine production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. And we are back. We're uh, middle of the bottom of the fourth inning here with two down. And we have a new pitcher on the mound for Carter Newman, number 27. Out of Velva, North Dakota. Right hand pitcher, sophomore, 6'2", 185 pounds. Let's see what uh, Carter can do against this uh, very confident uh, batting order today. 
swinging aggressively and swinging hard uh, today. So we're going to see the catcher, Colin Ritchie, uh, step to the plate here in just a moment. Colin is one for two on, well, maybe, I think he walked his first at bat. So officially 0 for 1 on the day. He's, he's 0 for 2 on the day. Struck out his first at bat and uh, popped up to the third baseman. Takes ball one outside. This is officially a nine inning game here. So uh, I think we have to get to the seventh inning for the 10 run rule to uh, come into play. I don't know if Lake State, Lake Region's gonna have enough pitchers to get the seventh inning, but. 3 0 count here to Richie. That's a nice strike down on the inside edge, inside part of the plate for strike one, three and one. Colin hammers turns on that one. Foul. Nice line drive down the third baseline, but foul by about five, six feet, I'd say. But he turned on that one. Yes, he did. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Ball four. Take your base, Colin Ritchie. Now oh, the top of the order, if I'm not mistaken. No, this is the top of the order now. Yes, yes, yes. We are back to the top of the order with Bohanek. Bohanek, um, who is two, uh, one for two on the day with a walk. He's got a single fly out to right field. And a walk. He starts off one and zero. Oh. Ooh, nice pickoff play by the catcher. Um, Richie had a healthy lead there. Catcher fired over, but uh, Richie was able to get back to first. Almost some catcher-on-catcher -catcher crime there. Yeah. Oh. And Bohanek hits spot is gets hit by a pitch in the back. Josh Atano, number five, steps up to the plate. Runners on first, second, two out. It's nice the Suns making an appearance. Hopefully warming warming the boys up a little bit. Yeah, somehow, some way. See that wind uh, die down a little bit. As we sit in this nice press box. Yeah, yeah. We're not I'm, I'm not complaining. Nice I, pitch. And I appreciate the invite, Mark. We can actually turn. So Hatano at the plate now takes strike one. Another strike on the outside edge of the zone there. I'd say that's a generous strike. I'm sure Josh isn't happy with that one, but 
nothing you can do about it. Well, and I mean, in all fairness, the ump has been pretty consistent with that all day today on that outside. No, don't give him any excuses, Mr. Culver. Outside, ball one, one and two. Tano two for three on the day, a double, single, and a ground out uh, to the shortstop. That one's in the turf, and Richie is going to take third base on that wild pitch. Bohanek advances to second. Runners on second and third for Josh Atano. They're playing it pretty straight up. There's a big healthy gap there in the right, in right center because the right fielder. Oh, oh, there's a Josh. chopper through Pulled the five-six hole, yeah. and that's going to score both runs. So a two RBI single into left field for Hatano. Pulls it hard through, like Mark said, the five-six hole there into the left field. Scores both runners, going at the crack of the bat with two outs. Jake Busson stepping up to the plate. Number nine, shortstop for the Tritons. Busson led this inning off with a pop fly to the shortstop for the first out. And uh, there's a hard ground ball to the third baseman who does a little backhand and is able to pick it up. It drops out of his glove. He picks it up and fires over to first. Just get Busson by half a step for the third out. And uh, but not before your Tritons can add six more runs here in the bottom of the fourth. And they lead 14-0 going into the fifth inning. And we'll bring you that fifth inning when we come back on the Triton Nation Network. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! for patients with cancer like leukemia, lymphoma, and other life-threatening diseases, a cure exists with bone marrow transplant. More young people are needed because these donors provide the greatest chance for transplant success. Please take the first step of being someone's cure by logging on to bethematch.org for your free swab kit. Let's score a touchdown for more people who need a bone marrow transplant. And folks, we are back. Start the top of the sixth, is it, Mark? Top of the fifth. Top of the fifth. Ryan Ohm back out for his fifth inning of work. Ryan, uh, dominant as always, had four innings of work and 51 pitches. He's got five strikeouts, one hit, and no runs, no walks. I love that stat right there, no walks, staying in control. 51 pitches, 37 of those strikes. And he starts off here against uh, number 34, the designated hitter. Uh, Tyler, no, Marshall Herman. Thank you. Outside pitch there, 2-0. Oh. Ryan's a very, very efficient pitcher. The other week in Kansas City, I think he had a three-pitch inning, a five-pitch inning, and maybe a six-pitch inning. It was fun to watch. So now I feel bad because I highlighted the fact that doesn't have any walks, and it's a 3-0 count now. Of course you jinxed him. Of course. That's what I do. I jinx people. But he comes back with it, fires a strike in there. Ooh, a 
low and outside, low and inside for ball four. Yeah, there we sorry. go, Mark. I'm sorry, we, we blew if, it. If Ryan's parents are listening, I'm sorry. You can blame that on me. <laughs> now number twenty-two. Ronald Nelson, second baseman, steps to the plate. S swing and a miss on Ryan's first offering. There's a pop fly to shallow right field. The right Johnson's given yeah. chase, but it drops. Not Johnson, but whoever's in right field. But I think it, that is solid. Or is that Finsky in right field? Yes, it's Finsky. Thank you, Finsky. Finsky. Yep. But Finsky. that drops in front of him for a bloop. I would say kind of a bloop single there. Yeah, that would have um, been a hard play for any any, yep. play, any right fielder to make. Yep. So now runners on first and second. Uh, Royals first real threat of the game here. Um, runners on first and second with no outs. That one is Get a outside. Balling. Runners yes. go, but uh, nice play by Ulrich. That comes off hard and fast off the uh, backstop, and and Richie was right there, grabs it and fires to third and gets the runner trying to advance to third on the wild pitch. So nice job there. Gets the out. A little unconventional out there, but we'll take it. Runner from first advances to second, yep. so they have a runner in scoring position. With one out. But Colin came up ready to fire. Made a nice play. Nice throw to third base. And a nice pitch there. Gets a swing and a miss by number 13. Uh, I think that's Ethan Weir. Or is this Keegan Wade Parker? One ball, one strike, one out. As Ryan delivers home. This is Keegan Wade, Wade Parker, the first baseman. Sorry, folks. One ball, two strikes, two Parker. One down, runner on second base. Those shoes like glow in the dark there in second base, don't they? Yes, they do. There's a chopper down the first baseline. Foul. First base coach for Lakes Region makes a stellar play. Good form. You know, gets Good hands, gets in front of it, two hands, gets down, picks it up, two hands, yeah. throws a nice strike back to Ryan Ohm. That's coaching, leading by example there. Absolutely. One ball, two strikes, one out. Ryan is pitching from the stretch. Oh, that's that, been a strike. That ma. I'm assuming that was low. Looked good from up here, but what do we know? Yep, what do we know? 2-2 two -two count now. We don't even get paid to do this, let alone umpire. <laughs> <laughs> We'd probably be just as good at the umpiring as we are at this, which is not saying, which is, you know, not which a good not thing. Which is not much. There's a little blooper down the first baseline. Foul bounces off the padding there. But if we can't have fun and laugh at ourselves, Mark, can't have anybody else laugh at us. That's true. That's true. If we're not laughing, then people are laughing at us instead of with us. So right. it's much better if they're laughing with us. Words of wisdom brought to you by <laughs> Mark Culver. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Runner on second base here in the top of the fifth inning. Triton's leading 14-0. There's a swing and a miss on a nice low outside pitch. Get some chase in for the second out. Nice job by Ohm. So now number five, the third baseman, Ethan Weir, steps to the plate. Um, nice pitch on the outside, uh, outside, but called for a strike. But Ump has been calling those consistently, so we will absolutely 100% take it. Well, one. 
Second base, or runner at second is getting a pretty generous lead there. He does. He's dancing around out there. Uh, I'd like to see him get That's back a nice to pitch. right about now. Low and center on the plate. Strike two. Ohm looking to strike this batter out and close out the threat in the fifth. As he should. Up 14 nothing. Don't need to worry about the runner at second. Hmm. That one's outside. Richie can't uh, hold on to it or get his glove solidly on it, and that rolls away from him down the first baseline, allowing the runner on second to take third base. But doesn't matter if we get the batter. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Another low and outside pitch there, two and two. Colin was able to get his glove on that one. Yep. That one's popped up out of play. Count remains 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes, two outs here on the top of the fifth inning. Triton's leading 14-0. Royals threatening with a to get their first run with a runner on third base. But uh, Ohm trying to close this out ahead of the batter, 2-2. Two, two. Nice pitch. Oh, that looked good. Must have been a little high. Yeah, I think that missed wow. a little high. Oof, full count now. There it is. Nope. Oh. Too low. And he walks him. Runners on first and third now. And uh, the number eight hitter, the catcher, Braden Ennert. Ainert is going to step to the plate. Ainert is uh, 0 for 1 on the day, looks like. And he takes strike one. Nice pitch. I'd be willing to bet that, uh, I don't have the stat in front of me right now, but I'm willing to bet Ohm is pretty high on his first pitch strikes. There's another. I love the way that pitch moves in. Oh, that looks so it good. It starts right at the batter's hip and finishes right over the plate. Yep. 0-2 oh now. You can tell this batter, he starts to step out and flinches, and next thing you know, it's a strike. There it is, swing and a miss. For a strikeout in the third out. And uh, Ohm collecting his seventh strikeout of the day and gets out of a little bit of trouble there in the fifth inning. Hold a shutout for the Tritons as we lead 14-0. We'll be back with the bottom of the fifth inning when we come back on the Triton Nation Network. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only biomanufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only biomanufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now in All right, we're back, folks, and it looks like uh, after five innings, or at least four and a half, after five innings of play for the Royals, they, I don't know, maybe they're out of pitching or something, but they have forfeited the game. 
and we're going to call this. So Ohm with a nice outing, five innings pitch, two hits, two walks, seven strikeouts, uh, five, six bombs, five bombs today for your Tritons, two of them by Ulrich, who had a day both in the field and at the plate, and by Numo. And uh, lots of RBIs, lots of good hits, 14 runs on 15 hits, and your Tritons, I think we're going to count this as a win, but they remain undefeated. Uh, and we will be back tomorrow. Uh, well, the Tritons will be playing uh, Lake Region State again tomorrow. We will not have a broadcast tomorrow, unfortunately, but we'll be back with the broadcast later this week um, as your Tritons continue their uh, undefeated season moving forward. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone.